All right, I will be live. All right, thank you, Dr. Vu. And next up is Dr. Bjorn Oskarsson, Associate Professor of Neurology, Director of the ALS Center of Excellence for Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville. Good morning. Thanks everybody who are on. Uh, and and uh, I'm fortunate to get to kind of follow a, a very nice presentation by Dr. Vu. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna be quite as detailed about the different products that we have also. Uh, again, uh, there's certainly lots of different things that we could talk about. Um, and, and, and you also have an opportunity to come by our booths and ask the specific questions regarding specific protocols afterwards. But I think that it is really exciting that there is such a wealth of projects going on right now. There's never been this many. So again, as you heard the long list from Dr. Vu, here comes another list. We're, we're working hard and we have a lot of things going on that are, um, that, that look exciting to us. I'm gonna start sharing my presentation. Now maybe. That I think looks good to me. And let's see, do let me know if it isn't looking right on your end. Otherwise, I think that this does look as it should. Mm -hmm. There we go. I do have some disclosures. Um, again, we are Mayo Clinic Florida. We have a multidisciplinary ALS clinic. We're the first in Florida. We have a large clinical and translational research project uh, program and also a very large basic research program. So we really kind of span, we're able to use our own patients and uh, what they give to go back and look at the root causes and origins of ALS and then take that back to patients again uh, to try to come up with better treatments. To have a realistic chance of, of curing ALS, though, we do need to understand what the problem is. Certainly, if we serendipitously get lucky, we'll take that, uh, have no doubt. But chances are that until we really understand the problem, uh, that we're not going to be able to fix it. Uh, again, I think that's at least the more uh, cautious approach and, and the, um, if we stumble upon a quick win, again, we'll take it, but otherwise it's going to be methodological hard work that gets us there. After me today, Dr. Belsil will talk a bit about what we know as to why motor nerve cells die. But again, even though we have great knowledge, we still don't have complete knowledge and we, desperately need this understanding to be able to design the kind of drugs we need for the cure. Uh, we're certainly going to keep filing away at it with all these other products that we're, we're doing. Um, uh, but to truly strike at the heart of ALS, we need to understand what, what that is. So we do need volunteers for biomarkers, again, to understand what ALS is. We need blood. Blood can tell us lots of things, can tell us about the genes, can tell us about a lot of other things. Um, we're very appreciative of, of donations of blood. Spinal fluid brings us one step closer to the nerve cells. Again, this is the fluid that we take at the, in the low back where the spine has ended. Um, it's something our nurses do. It's not without problem, but it, uh, the problems tend to be mild, headache, a pain where you had the needle poked. Um, one of my patients who, who's doing one of these products right now thinks that the COVID swabs are far worse than the spinal taps. Um, anyway, we do need spinal fluid and it, it brings us closer to the sick nerve cells so we can learn a lot more from looking in spinal fluid. 
And this is a bigger ask of, of you all. So, um, but again, if you hear this call and, and are considering giving, we would greatly appreciate that. We also very graciously take donations of brains and spinal cords after death. Um, that's a something some people want to give. And, and, and if you live in Florida or Georgia, we are able to, to uh, take care of that. And uh, we do have a repository for these tissues. It is used, uh, really all our um, collected samples are used very much from Mayo Clinic Research, but we also share information with other institutions. Uh, University of Miami uh, would be one that's on here today, Hopkins, Emory, and, and Mass General or others that we often work with. So again, uh, we are trying to understand ALS and, and we're doing this both due to these kind of measures where we're trying to measure the disease where we are looking for why people get ALS. And again, so far, what we've come up with there has to do with genetic reasons. Again, we do have high suspicions for a lot of environmental factors, but um, it is mostly um, genetics where we kind of come to a good enough understanding to really be sure about something. And again, the tissue banking that I mentioned. We will keep trying, uh, but again, we will often fail uh, without this uh, complete understanding. And, and this year, I don't know if we have volunteers on who helped out with this Levocinomendum project. That's the last fail this year. It doesn't mean that we're gonna stop, but uh, we have had a lot of drugs that we tried in ALS. And, and, and again, to date, we have the really sold, we have the Darabone, uh, those are approved. Uh, and there's some other things that are may look like it, it, it might be good enough. But again, those are the two that we have uh, that's reached approval. Um, we mostly keep trying to kind of find the real answers. But I think many of us who do this also do believe that there's something intrinsically good for people, for people with ALS to be part of a research project. Uh, that is something which we have limited evidence for, but again, uh, I think most of us do believe that. So we think that putting people through these difficult uh, projects that uh, if nothing else requires frequent travel and blood draws and sometimes spinal taps and, and taking a new investigational drug that we really don't know what it does, um, we do think that it, it seems like it still does something good for people. A couple of brief things, I mean, sort of how, how so, so how do we measure what we make? Again, how, how do we measure the knowledge that we gain? And again, in this last year, since we were here last, I guess we have about almost 1500 publications on ALS. So our, the knowledge, about ALS has grown a lot since last year. Uh, some of that came out of our institution. Some would have come from these other Florida institutions. Florida right now is has a, I would say a very strong set of institutions working on this. Uh, this is one that we just finished up that's not just published where we achieved our goal. And this is a drug that's on the US market, Parampanil. Um, it um, is an anti seizure drug. It works on the uh, AMPA receptors. It's been shown to work in, in mouse models of ALS. And what we were trying to do here was just to kind of see if we could affect the problem with overstimulation in the motor cortex that we see in ALS. And yes, it does seem to work. Larger trials should be coming out with uh, more data on this, uh, hopefully later this year. We have this needle project uh, with a wheelchair controller from UCF, um, where we have patients driving wheelchairs using these um, uh, sticker controllers on the surface. So nothing implanted. This is not a neural link 
um, that, that you need to implant in your uh, skull. Uh, this is something you can uh, put on the outside. And, and right now it's actually it's a headband, so it's not even a, a, a real sticker anymore. Very briefly, again, I don't have that much time. I'll touch on a couple of the trials that we have coming up here. Uh, you heard about some of them, um, again, out in the future here from Dr. Vu. Uh, I didn't look that far forward as he did. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. So the, this is one that we have now. This is combat, the Butylas. I'll, I'll spend a little bit more time on this. I think that this will also be a project that, that uh, some of the other sites here may be doing. I don't know exactly how far along they are in the process. This is a, another anti-inflammatory drug uh, that was touched on a couple of times here earlier already. We um, do see that inflammation is involved in ALS. It is involved in a way that just knocking it out completely is probably not helpful. Um, increasing it a lot is probably not helpful. And it's sort of a modulation. Is there a way we can kind of shift it to our favor? So. Uh, this has been trialed many times, and again, many more efforts are underway. Again, the immune system is, compared to the nervous system, easy to interact with on a pharmacological basis. So again, th there's a lot of things we're trying here, and, and uh, I think most of us think we'll get it right eventually. Um, you know, we don't want to knock people's immune system out too much. I mean, that's dangerous. Uh, and so these are, again, nudging medications. This medication here is a drug that is, it's been on the, the Japanese market now for 30 years. So it's a well-known drug. We know it's sort of uh, the issues it has, which aren't very many. Um, and so it's safe. And the question is, if this brand or version of immunomodulation uh, will, will make the difference, there's also some exciting possible ideas that it has to do with how your nurses are breaking down globs of, of, of the proteins that are not supposed to be there. But again, at least uh, our best understood effect of this drug is, is this immune aspects of it. A trial was done in the Carolinas by Dr. Brooks uh, with this drug, which I think many of us looked at and were intrigued by. This drug suggested, the study suggested that at a year's time that patients who were getting the drug uh, did better than people who, who were getting placebo. And, and um, the, the drug was able to hold a good chunk, maybe about a quarter or so of people stable, maybe tiny bit even improved over that time. Um, these kind of phase two studies, again, these early phase studies, um, like the platform is going to be these kind of phase two projects are not necessarily answering the, the final question if something works or not. Uh, this is distinctly smaller than the platform phase twos. The platform phase twos are kind of on the, the bigger end. And even this uh, specific product that we're now doing is sort of a phase two slash three. So it's really kind of a very large phase two, three. Uh, we're running it over a year uh, with 230 patients. Um, again, it is something where we're hoping to hold a portion of our patients stable over this time that they're in the study. Um, we have good knowledge about the drug, so it's not a drug which we expect is going to hold any surprises. And we are looking for volunteers. This is only for people who've had 18 months from their first symptom. So we're only looking for very early patients. Um, there's also several other inclusion exclusion criteria in this study. This study we have designed to really answer the question if this drug works. We have this initial signal that looks promising, but this is a product that will answer the question if it works or not. 
So it's long, it's big, and it's a very, very carefully measured group of people that we're putting in. Again, not this is uh, an experiment that should answer the question if the drug is worthwhile or not. Uh, it is a drug that, again, is safe already. We're pretty sure about that. And the question is, does it really do something like this in, in a larger group of people? If so, it's something that uh, we need to be using. We have the Mayo Clinic stem cell project, which has a fairly high level of, of sort of public uh, it's talked about. Uh, we do inject mesenchymal stem cells uh, in the spinal fluid on people with ALS. Um, it's a product that's been running for many years and, and uh, we have started doing it, many of the evaluations for patients in Florida. We still only inject people in Rochester. So anybody who's participating in this one need to go up to Rochester, Minnesota where the, uh, our original Mayo Clinic is, is located. Um, it is a cell type pretty similar to the Neuron product. Again, it's your own mesenchymal cells. Uh, not identical to the Neuron product, but similar. Uh, so we're not shooting for gold. These are, this is not a cell replacement therapy. This does not grow nerve cells. This is just a way of delivering some cells that might help quiet down things nearby where we put them. We're, we're, we're hoping to learn more about cell delivery in ALS through this. We're not really trying to answer the question if this specific cell type actually has a ability to slow down ALS. We're, we're, this is more of an information gathering project. Um, I want to mention Valor. So here is one of these projects where we're kind of looping back with a half decent understanding of the underlying problem. I, I assume that this is a project that other institutions that also participate in it will mention it because here, uh, this is for that 1% of all ALS that's due to SOD1 mutation. So this is very small portion of all ALS. Um, but for that portion, we can devise gene-stopping drugs, drugs that bind to the RNA that's being read off the DNA. It binds to this RNA and it destroys it, or your body destroys it. It's sort of tagged for destruction. And that means that probably a lot less of that uh, problem pro uh, protein is being made. And it seems to slow disease progression, maybe by 90%. So this is, again, better than the Riluzole or Daravone that we have today. Again, this is a major effect on slowing. Uh, and it comes as we are understanding the, at least kind of the root of this. Maybe we do not, I, I, we, we don't understand all the things that go wrong subsequently. And there's still much more to learn there. And, and we do definitely need to keep working on all kinds of ALS, including SOD1 ALS, to understand it better. Uh, but here we're, we're hopeful that we're getting to a understanding that's good enough to really be able to do something. Uh, hopefully we'll be here for all ALS uh, so that we can design drugs that really hit close to the target soon. Uh, the C9 story um here we're just a step behind this is why i came to mayo clinic four years ago um the c9 als is the, is the today most common understood cause of als it was identified by the groups at mayo before i came and we are now trying to stop that gene with gene stopping drugs um still very early and 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 we'll I have very far to go, but we're, we're definitely, uh, we're trying, we're trying, we're kind of taking that full circle and, and are back at trying to hit the target. I should recognize all our patients and their families who help out and, and let us care for them. Uh, I have a tremendous bunch of people here uh, who, who are helping me. Uh, we're helping each other, um, trying to help our patients. 
the ones that I've underlined are people who are here today, Dr. Shaw, my uh, Jamie, uh, Veronique's coming up next, uh, that's who I'm seeing time from, and Megan will also be manning the booth. So we need you, please help us with blood, spinal fluid, and uh, tissue donations. And we also need trial volunteers. Thank you, I believe I'm up on time. And let's see here, stop broadcasting.